Loki is arguably the weirdest father image one can imagine of. The cunning trickster god in Norse mythology, the god of fire and mischief, is the one we are all well acquainted with, more or less. He is considered by most to be evil, but even though he is the god of chaos and trickery, he surely isn't evil, or at least his intentions aren't. He had the magical abilities of shape-shifting, gender fluidity, astral projection, hypnosis, molecular rearrangement, energy blasts, levitating, conjuration, cryokinesis, telekinesis, and teleportation. Now wonder what his weird children would function like, those who are considered to be far worse than Loki himself. This video covers exactly the answer to this wondering. So, hello, and let's get started. It is believed that the Loki and the giantess Angraboda had three infamous ones. The first son, a wolf, the god of destruction. The second one, Jormungand, the Midgard Serpent, and the youngest, a daughter, Hel, the Queen of Helheim. They were the ones on whom prophecies and thus the upcoming disasters were learned by their Aesir gods. He is also presumed to have birthed an eight-legged horse, Sleipnir, with the stallion Sladafari, and having two sons, Narfi, or Nari, and Vali, with his Aesir wife Sigyn, who were destined to pay for the sins of their father. Now, let's look at the story behind each of these mischievous characters. Fenrir He, in his wolf form, was enormous and vigorous enough that no chains were capable of holding him. Alarmed and dismayed by the havoc this beast and his siblings will bestow on the Nine Realms, the Asir gods decided to outsmart him as they were not physically capable of destroying him. So, they played with his pride convincing him to entwine himself with a chain and break free as a show of his strength, to which he readily agreed. Twice he freed himself from the chains, which made the gods realize they needed something much more paramount and persuasive. They reached out the top-tier craftsmen of Norse cosmos, the dwarves, and requested them to develop an unbreakable chain. Thus, the Gleipnir, more like a ribbon than a chain, came into existence. Suspicious by the fact that he was being tethered by a ribbon, Fenrir bargained that the hand of one Aesir had to be placed in his mouth as a sense of surety that they'll release him. God Tyre was the only one who was brave enough to consent to that and lost his hand. The prophecy on Fenrir stated that Fenrir would destroy the biggest part of the cosmos during Ragnarok, Doom of the Gods. He will be free again and he will run all over the cosmos with his lower jaw to the earth and his upper jaw to the sky devouring everything in his path and will also kill Odin. Jormungand He was believed to be a poisonous serpent who could spring out perpetually. But according to sources, Jormungand wasn't always that huge and was once so tiny that he could be held in the hands. It was Odin who feared him and sensed the danger that he might cause, so he threw him deep into the vast ocean that surrounded Midgard, the Middle Earth or the world of humans. The serpent there learned to thrive and amplified so much that he encircled the whole earth and grasped his tail in his mouth, justifying the name the Midgard Serpent. According to the Ragnarok prophecy, him dropping the tail would be the end of the world and that Thor, the god of thunder, and Jormungand would execute each other in the final battle. Thor will kill the serpent, but by that time he would spew so much poison into Thor and the Nine Worlds that both would slide down the path of destruction. Hell She was banished into the Underworlds, and there are two theories behind it. In the first, it is believed that she rebelled against Odin, while the other one argues that she was thrown into the Niflheim the land of dead, shortly after her birth, just because she was the daughter of Loki. This giantess, the more sinister and monstrous one, with half her body of a beautiful woman and the other half of a corpse, was considered a cold-hearted, uncaring one who is neither good nor evil. She was made the goddess and queen of the dead without glory as the ones who died due to disease or old age, and not in the battlefield went to her realm, which was then named Helheim and those who died gloriously in the battlefield traveled to Valhalla, the enormous hall in Asgard ruled by Odin. The prophecy on her was, on the arrival of the apocalypse, Ragnarok, she will sail to Asgard alongside Loki as the head of an army of the dishonorable dead, and join the other children of Loki on the battle against the Aesir gods, perhaps seeking vengeance for the monstrous treatment of her family. Sleipnir 
He was the eight-legged horse of Odin. The story behind this is that, when the world wasn't developed, Asgard was without a concrete boundary. A craftsman offered to build for the gods in three seasons in exchange of the beautiful goddess Freya as his wife along with the sun and moon. It was a price that was extremely steep, and so, after much negotiation, the builder and gods concluded that if he completed the work in a season without any man force and only with the help of a stallion, Svadalafari, he'd be paid in full. The gods were unsure, but Loki convinced them that the craftsman won't be able to complete the work. But the work proceeded swiftly with the help of the horse, and three days before the season came to an end, only the last part was left to build. Loki was blamed and threatened to correct his mistake by the gods who were unwilling to pay the full price. The shapeshifter, Loki, took the form of a ravishing mare and distracted and lured the horse away, sabotaging the work. The man couldn't complete the sin, and his wrath exposed his true giant self who was duped and was thus killed by Thor. Loki returned after months with a gray eight-legged steed and gifted the best horse in among gods and men to Odin. This steed, accepted by Odin, was the child that Loki birthed after mating with the stallion Svadalafari. Narfi, or Nari, and Vali. Loki was directly involved in the murder of Baldur, the god of light and justice and the most beloved one in the Norse myth. This enraged the gods who scavenged him out of his hiding place and took him to a cave. They took three rocks, bored holes into it, and brought in the two sons of Loki from his Asir wife Sigyn. The Asir turned Vali into a wolf, and Vali, in the form of a wolf, killed his brother Nari, and his entrails were used to bind Loki to the rocks. Thus, it is a truth that Vali and Nari suffered for what Loki did, and that it was their fate to pay the price and be the target of vengeance because of Loki, their father. Skadi, the goddess of wilderness, placed a serpent above Loki so that its venom would fall on his face. And even after all this, their mother, Sigyn, tried to protect Loki by placing a bowl beneath the mouth of the snake to collect the venom. But every time she went to empty the bowl, the venom dripped on Loki's face causing such immense pain that he screamed and writhed. People believed that the earth would shake up because of that. Many people believe that Loki deserved the punishment for murdering god Baldur, but his children suffered for no reason. His need to take revenge on gods was indeed justifiable, as well as firstly, the gods had cast Loki's children, namely Fenrir, Jormungand, and Hel, to the middle of nowhere place when they were little for apparently no solid reason. Second, the deeds of using Loki's son's entrails to bind him were somewhat unacceptable too, and if they threw his children away because of the prophecy, screaming that his three children would cause terrible destruction, then wasn't the act of the gods towards the same children eventually made the prophecies to be true? Let us know your thoughts on this down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed watching this video, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on such amazing takes on mythology in the future. We'll see you next time with another coverage. Until then, stay mischievous.